According to the Cleveland Clinic, leaky gut syndrome is the theory that intestinal permeability is not only a symptom of gastrointestinal disease, but an underlying cause which develops independently. If your intestinal barrier is impacted, it may be letting toxins into your bloodstream. David Maimi is a cancer survivor and a serial entrepreneur. Along with his wife, Carla, David is on a mission now to help people live more healthy. David has had many health challenges throughout the course of his life, including his own journey with his own gut health. And if you spend any length of time with him, he'll tell you that we do not have to accept ill health as a way of life. And according to my me, it's important for all of us to know just how vitally important our gut health really is to our overall quality of life. Understanding that what we put into our bodies really does make a measurable difference if we plan to manage our health effectively. For my me, staying active is critically important. He is a competitive pickleball player and an avid cyclist. He's got a gaggle of children, grandchildren, and not to mention the latest addition to the Miami family, his great-grandchild. Miami says that it's his game plan to stick around for a while and maximize his family and personal time with his wife and exploring the things he loves to do. And according to Miami, in order to see it all through and really have a full circle of life, optimizing his health is a must. He joined me this week to discuss one of his latest books, Unlocking Your Leaky Gut, to discuss his health journey and discovery of what really makes him happy in life. He even dabbled in discussing the special bond he has with his wife, Carla, and why it's important for them to be joined at the hip, both in their personal and professional life. So, if you're ready for a well-rounded conversation about gut health, life, and everything in between, it may be a good idea for you to stick around. Because without further delay, Miami joins me this week to tell me more. I'm Kevin McShann. Let's have this conversation. take a moment to welcome you to the program and I'm super excited to uh, talk to you about how you help people maximize their health and life my friend great uh, to see you this afternoon and thank you so very much for being here oh you're welcome and David absolutely you say that we don't have to accept ill health ill health as part of our living so I'm wondering how you came up with that sort of methodology and why why didn't you believe that is the case well what's interesting is um one of the reasons we uh, published it was my fourth book i wrote unlocking the leaky gut code was 
I've had so many challenges with my health all of my life. And in 2015, I got diagnosed with bladder cancer and uh, ended up with three surgeries, 21 tumors, two rounds of chemo. I had severe neuropathy in my feet. I had, uh, it looked like early stages of dementia. So I was having problems with my brain and memory, had severe arthritis. Uh, so I had three back surgeries during that time period. And so I was just a mess. And so because of all of that, you know, I worked with doctors that are well-meaning, amazing uh, trained individuals, and they just kept putting me on medicines. And so from 1999 to uh, 2018, I was on 10 serious medications to manage my pain and my health issues. And luckily, 2017, I got in remission with the cancer. And so what, what to answer your question, is that for my genetics, my DNA, the American diet just ravages my immune system. And so I developed a leaky gut uh, when I was younger. And because of the food particles that were going through my small intestines into the bloodstream, what was happening was it was creating all this inflammation. I had severe inflammation. And what that does is overwhelms the immune system. And so it wasn't fighting the cancer. It was just causing so many problems. And the doctors just kept telling me, well, this is just what you got to deal with. They never looked. Unfortunately, they're not trained in nutrition. They're not trained in diet. They basically diagnose, look at the symptoms, and then give you uh, some kind of uh, medication. If medication doesn't work or surgery, and in my case, I was just told that you've got to accept this. Well, in 2018, we began this journey of learning that you can absolutely, in my case, my neuropathy is in remission. My arthritis is in remission. My brain fog is in remission. Cancer is in remission. Every health consequence I was dealing with that was negative and just so severe for my life are all in remission. Now I want to make one point, the word remission. If I go back to the way that I ate before, so if I put the foods that I've taken out back in my diet, if I put the sugar back in, if I eat the gluten again, now for me, you know, I have a gluten sensitivity. If I do all those things again, then all the pain comes back, the problems come back. And so since 2018, I started working on getting off all the medications. I worked with the doctors. They you know, did not agree with me, but I said, I really believe I don't need to be on this medicine. And by changing my diet, I, you know, with supplementation, eating the right foods, taking out foods that were going through my small intestine, I was able to, in October of 2020, get off all 10 medications. My wife had gone to school and got certified as a functional nutrition coach. And so with her working with me on nutrition and some amazing doctors that do restorative health and are functional medicine doctors that believe in you know nutrition and diet and all that, I'm a walking miracle today. And so you don't have to accept all this poor health you can naturally change and reverse that with knowledge and doing the right things. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, David, I was personally born with uh, cerebral palsy. So I, I've been overcoming health challenges all of my life. And I, I'm all, also curious to ask you about perseverance and what you've learned most about, about yourself when you went went through uh this health journey of yours you know that that's a perfect word most people so my wife and i have a company called more than healthy and we use hair analysis now it's called epigenetics and we show people 800 things that are going on from taking the hair uh you know four pieces of hair putting in it scan it sending it to germany coming back and when we show people their 36-page report, 
the the biggest thing that I see is that people don't have discipline. And perseverance is about discipline. So it's getting as much facts as you can and then starting step by step by step, line upon line, precept upon precept, here a little, there a little. And what happens is, is as you persevere, you will see amazing changes in the way you think, the way you act. My wife and I have a really important thing. We don't want to grow older and accept and persevere with crappy health. We want to live longer with optimal health, and it takes perseverance to do that. And it's just doing the little things every day, day in, day out, and just working towards a goal of, in our case, we just want to, we have 18 grandkids and seven children, and we want to be able to be healthy, be active, do things with them. We love to play pickleball. I'm a competitive cyclist, road bike. And so we want to be able to enjoy this amazing life and not accept and persevere with, with poor health. We want to persevere with the, the optimal health and immunity that we can. You're know, building on that point, David. I'm also curious to ask you about personal accountability uh, when it comes to health. Because as you said uh, earlier in our conversation, it's important that you listen to your own body and your own uh, way of thinking sometimes. Because as if you didn't uh, advocate for yourself to get off those medication who knows where you would be right so tell me about personal accountability and how important do you think that is for people to take personal accountability of their health you know that's such a good point we have a model that we've built that has two foundations and then pillars for optimal help and you'll probably be surprised at that but the very bottom foundation that you have to have is you have to start with why. Because you can't have accountability if you don't have that why. So for me, my why, my wife and I blended two families together 21 years ago. My why is I want to celebrate my 50th wedding anniversary with my wife, which means I'm going to be 95 years old. And I want to be lucid. We love to dance. And I want that at 95 years old, to be an amazing, amazing event. And to do that, you've got, I have that why, and then I've created accountability of how and the what's that will get me to accomplish that goal. And so, yes, you have to be accountable to yourself. In my case, I'm lucky because I get to be accountable to my wife and we're working together as a team. But you're right, that accountability starts with why, and then you hold yourself accountable to reach these goals to be for your optimal health. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, David, if someone's watching this or listening to it, to it, and they really want to optimize their gut health. What do you think is the roadmap to get that done? Well, one of the things that we have found that's really uh, critical is you've got to have knowledge, you got to have the information. And so one of the tools that we have found that's really inexpensive is to do a hair analysis. The hair analysis will tell you if you have a leaky gut. It will tell you what foods you need to remove from your diet. It will tell you what minerals and vitamins that you're deficient in, what environmental factors. Like when I did my first hair analysis, I had no idea I had a parasite. I also had a virus. I had a long-term virus. I had toxic metals issues. And so what it does is it gives you a roadmap to say, okay, here's the things that I can change. And then what you do is we help our clients and we help ourselves just pick three or four things that they could work on. And then in 90 days, your hair follicle changes because it captures all this information in your body. So then at 90 days, you do a hair analysis again, and then you can see if those changes are working. And then usually in 90 days, then other things become a priority and you work on those. And so for me, you know, my, you know, my 
came back and said that, you know, still said wheat's an issue, which we know, so I don't eat wheat. It said that I needed to, st uh, that cauliflower was an issue and chocolate was an issue. And all I had to do for 90 days was just decrease that. And there's some fish that were issue. And so I just took those foods out of my diet. I did a cleanse to get rid of the parasite and get that out of my uh, digestive system and things improved. And then there's other things we worked on. And so the key is, I think, to really get started on your optimal health, everybody should consider doing a hair analysis to see what it is that they're dealing with. And then they can start making changes and holding themselves accountable to optimal health and immunity. Yeah, absolutely. And David, you mentioned earlier about your uh, uh, athletic background is a cyclist and a pickleball player. And as an old sports reporter, buddy, I'm excited to ask you about how important do you think it is to remain active in order to really optimize your health? You know, it's one of the foundations, you know, it's what we call it as a pillar, right? So eating the right foods is a pillar, taking out foods that, you know, your body don't, doesn't work with your DNA exercise. You know, you've got, you know, I exercise five times a week, an hour bet between pickleball and cycling. And it's just for your cardiovascular health. It's for your muscles is to get everything to work right. And so exercise is one of those pillars that are so important to optimal health. And I'm 66 years old. And so I still want to cycle and play pickleball, you know, in, in my 90s. And I think I'll be able to do that because I'm so focused on my optimal health. Yeah, absolutely. And David, I know that you've also been a lifelong entrepreneur with many successes and lessons along the way, buddy. So tell me about some of the successes you've had and, and some of the greatest lessons that you've learned in business as well. Well, and as you know, you know, dealing with your cerebral palsy and your health issues and the fact that you're doing this podcast shows that you're focused in your life about solving problems. So a true entrepreneur finds a way to solve a problem, right? And so I've done 18 companies over my 45 year career. Um, my last several companies have been health related. We sold a company in 2016 and um, it was a very successful company. And the reason we sold it is because my cancer battle and my wife and I wanted just to focus on my health. And, and you know, my wife actually thought she was going to be a widow after that third diagnosis. And, you know, it was just she just felt like we needed to sell the company. We sold her home. We downsized, got rid of a ton of stuff because she didn't want to deal with all that if I passed. And so, you know, our when you're an entrepreneur, you want to solve problems. And so some of the problems I wanted to solve, some of those companies I started, when I got into it, I just wasn't passionate enough about them. And so I, you know, would shut them down and then go, you know, do something else. And, you know, I had four just very successful companies out of the 18. We're working on this one called More Than Healthy. And, you know, our goal is to make it successful. But this, this company is more, we're solving people's crises with their health. But this is more of a lifestyle business. We're not focused on making a profit. We're just focused on getting enough revenue to get some incredible people that can help all these people that we're dealing with. And so the key is, at the end of the day, to be successful as an entrepreneur, you have to be passionate about the problem that you're solving because what will happen as your company grows, you're going to have tons of problems. You're going to have hiring people and financial issues and product development. You just have all these things that you're constantly solving and or if there's a particular thing in your business as you grow it that you don't like to do, maybe it's finance or maybe it's product development, then you hire really good people to do those and then you manage them and set the what you want to do. And the key for every company that's been successful at the end of the day is we had a strong why. 
And then we're able to do the what's and the how's and get that credit, that accountability that you and I talked about earlier. Because when you own your own business, you got to be accountable every step of the way or it will fail. Absolutely. And, and as you said in your last answer, you and your wife are, to, uh, are committed to this more than healthy mission uh, and making sure that pe people can optimize uh, their health. So tell me about the more than healthy mission and working with your, your wife and the uh, successes and uh, challenges that come along with that. So, you know, we, two years ago, when we first wrote our book, we had our first huge problem. We had a doctor that decided to uh, legally fight us for the title of our book. And so we fought all of 2022. We thought we had the trademark and this doctor, the very last day, uh, filed an opposition and started a legal process. Finally, in 2022, the end of it, we resolved it, decided to to give up the trademark and we now have trademarked luckily more than healthy so we've built a website called morethanhealthy.com we changed the title of our book to unlocking the leaky gut code and so we republished our book in december my wife and i are the narrator so we did it the audible audio book so people can get it in audio it's also on kindle and all the different ways for the book and so all of that work that we did in 2021 and 2020, which is like any business, you know, failed. And we had to start over and we had to make a decision. Do we keep going and lose all the money or do we give up and lose all the money? And my wife and I are just so committed and so passionate because our why is to help our company's why is to help people achieve their optimal health and immunity. You've heard me say that multiple times throughout our conversation. That's because that's our why. And now we have our hows and our whats. And at the end of the day, I love working with my wife. We make a great team. She, you know, we've helped tens of thousands of men and women get healthy with our previous company. It was called Ideal Shape. And so we had to sell that. And so it was really hard for me to sell my my wife and I sell our dream company, but this more than healthy is so cool because we can really help people fine tune and find those things that are detrimental to their health and to do the positive things that will help them improve. And so I'm a speaker, so I love to, I'm on a national speaker. I love to speak. My wife and I go out and do speaking events together. You know, my wife coaches people one-on-one -on -one. And we do this hair analysis and we sell our book and we're just having fun helping people, you know, find joy in their life by getting healthier. Yeah, absolutely. And then I'm curious to get your uh, opinion or definition of how you define the word inclusion and emotional courage. I'm curious to get your thoughts there as well. You know what I love? is that we're all humankind, right? We're all, in one way or another, we're related some way. If you go all the way back through time, there's some way that we're related, right? And my thing is, is everybody should be helping everybody be the best version of themselves. And so I don't, you know, I was fortunate when I grew up. I grew up in a, in Denver, Colorado and went to a school and we, you know, they segregated us. And so I grew up with all color types, all, you know, ethnics. I, you know, and so I, you know, I had that culture and I grew up with that. And so I, you know, I had friends everywhere and basically friends from every country, you know, and so I've always looked at that we're all brothers and sisters. We all should support, we all should help each other. And so I think your term of inclusion is so important, you know, and it's, and we all should do that. And we all should, you know, look at each other. And, you know, one thing that I've really learned more than anything, I became a certified life coach and did all the schooling. And, you know, it's so interesting where our thoughts go. 
and how we go so quickly to negativity if somebody offends us or someone cuts us off when we're driving down the street. And we don't know, like, you know, sometimes at 66 years old, I'm trying to drive and and I there's somewhere I need to go and I miss a turn and I do something, you know, too quick. And the person behind me, you know, I had one last week, a car, you know, came up and I, you know, made a move which wasn't detrimental, but he wasn't happy. He came up and, you know, he, you know, gave me an ugly sign. And luckily there happened to be a cop car watching what's going on. And that guy got pulled over and got a ticket. And I'm not glad that he got a ticket, but there was no reason to get mean and wanting to be violent with me because I made a simple mistake. And so what I love more than anything is if we can learn to be forgiving not of just everyone around us, but we need to forgive ourselves. And so if you find that you've got health issues, you know, love yourself and look for ways to improve your health, right? And genetically, you know, I don't have what you're struggling with. I look at you and the life that you're trying to create with cerebral palsy, and I applaud you. I applaud what you're trying to do to, for your audience and to bring people like me and talk about health and wellness and inclusion and all these things, you're amazing to me. And I'm grateful that you're inspiring me to be a better version of myself. Well, and that's what we should all do. Well, I certainly appreciate that. And uh, David, you know, outside of hosting uh, this podcast, podcast, I also help businesses sort of diversify their workforces and amplify the hiring of, of folks with disabilities. So when we look at a sort of diversity in business for all people, I'm curious, yeah. what comes to mind for you? You know, the thing that's, you know, I love, you know, that communities are doing is looking for ways to include disabilities, right? So we have in our family the same thing going on, right? You know, whether it's health, you know, whether it's, you know, deformity, whether it's, you know, we've got family members that are dealing with bipolar, you know, conditions, which, you know, just really is difficult. And so the thing is, is, you know, we need to look at being patient, looking at how we can include and help solve problems instead of putting up barriers and so, you know, in our businesses, you know, we've always looked for an opportunity to see if we can help and bring people that have disabilities, you know, in our community, you know, we deal a lot with that. You know, one of the, one of the things that's so interesting is to look at, what is it? I think it's one in 79 men now are born with, um, God, I don't know if you can help me with the term. I don't know why my mind just went blank. Oh, they struggle with cognitive issues. There's a term for it. And, you know, we have that going on in our family. And we know, you know, we love and support and do what we can to help. And we want other people outside of us as grandparents and parents to do th the same thing for our family. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. And uh, David, I, I know as a, uh, speaker, you also want to create a more inclusive environment when it comes to our fitness and our health. But I also wanted to ask you about when you're on stage and talking to pe people, how, how important is it for you uh, to help them really prioritize what's important to them in life? Because, uh, you know, as a motivational speaker, we always look to solve problems or uh, provide solutions. So I'm wondering, what's your biggest motivation uh, uh, to be a speaker and really spread, spread your message to the masses? I think what's unique about me is that I try to inspire my audience that they can overcome adversity, whether it's a boss, that they don't like working for or a colleague that they work for or their personal health or relationships in their family or politics 
or whatever it is that people are dealing with, I try to inspire them to be the solution and not the cause and make problems work, you know, worse. And so if I can do that with my story about how I've been successful in business, how I've been successful in changing my health, and I, I can tell, you know, what's interesting, uh, you probably already know this, when you speak, when you stand up, 50% of the people already judge you, don't like you, and aren't interested in your message. And so if you were easily offended as a speaker, then, you know, you're not going to last long. And so when I'm sitting there and I'm speaking, if I can get 10 or 20 percent where I make eye contact or if when I ask questions and I get responses and I can see that we're really connecting and they then, you know, I get messages, emails, I get whatever, you know, I am so inspired to keep doing it because no matter what we do, you know, we're, we're not going to be able to connect with everybody. And so you just do your best. And so I just inspire, give great information, give them a way that they can improve and be the best versions of themselves. And, you know, that's the best I can do in trying to include and inspire. I just know that percentages aren't very, you know, it's not huge. And so if I can just inspire that small group, then I've been successful. Yeah, absolutely. And for you personally, David, I, I'm sure... How do you uh, define joy and fulfillment in your life? You know, luckily, I learned a long time ago, and I'm so blessed to uh, really not. So when when I went to become a certified life coach, it's interesting when people are searching for happiness. No matter what in life, you're going to have fifty percent negative and fifty percent positive experiences. And so there are, there is kind of this ongoing thing. You see it changing year by year where people are trying to find happiness. It's called buffering. And that buffering is drugs, alcohol, pornography, food addiction, shopping addiction. There's all of these buffering that people do to find happiness. And what happens is, is all of those buffering actually cause worse consequences. So for me, joy has been that because I've worked hard at being disciplined, you know, I don't have and don't do all that buffering, right? I luckily as a youth, when I was showed pornography, I didn't get addicted to it and stayed away. I didn't get into drugs. I didn't get into alcohol. I didn't get into sexual perversions. I didn't get into all these things. So when I was going through school and I, I saw, oh my gosh, I'm not doing all this buffering. And I looked at how when I have negative things, positive things, how I deal with them, I can honestly tell you because of the way my life has developed and everything, I have joy. I have joy in my wife, the relationship that we have. I have joy with my children joy with my grandchildren. I also now have a great grandson and um, enjoy my family, joy with my friends and just joy being with people because I'm trying to be the best version of myself. And then because I'm doing that, that influences other people around me. Well, David, if, if we work hard enough, life eventually comes full circle, doesn't it? It, it does. It does. Absolutely. And uh, David, my final question for you this afternoon has to do with your own personal and professional legacy and how you want that to be defined. That I was a happy person inspiring people to be the best versions of themselves and that I work every day at forgiving myself and forgiving others. And we're all, at the end of the day, just trying to do the best we have with whatever life has dealt us. Yeah, absolutely. And David, finally, tell me, if people want to get connected with you personally or purchase the book, what's the best way they can do that? So they can go to morethanhealthy.com and they can learn more about my wife and myself and what we do to help people. They can get our book, Unlocking the Leaky Gut Code, 
it's on Amazon, so they can get it in paperback, Kindle, or they can get it in Audible in an audio version. And then um, that's it's just there's lots of ways to contact us. Absolutely. Well, David, I, I certainly enjoyed our conversation, and I, I want to thank you for being uh, vulnerable and, uh, and opening up to, uh, to parts of your life that, that caused you to persevere and to overcome uh, both adversity and find joy, my friend. Your work in the space of gut health and motivating people is most appreciated. And I, I sincerely want to thank you for being here this afternoon. Well, I really appreciate the time you took to spend with me and to let me be on your show. You have a wonderful week and a wonderful life.